Hey there, Internet. Last time I made a rack and pinion DRO, and that kind of inspired me to take a look at uh, a project that I that I started in 2019, where I was taking some old refrigerator magnet material that I have a big roll of, and I was trying to see if I could make a DRO out of it. What I had done after that 2019 video was I ordered some of these tunneling magneto restrictive. Uh, sensors, these TMR sensors from a company called Red Rock. There are 111 sensors and they're supposed to be super sensitive and have very high noise resistance. So I ordered some of those and then I didn't really do anything with them. I, I had made a little prototype board and then I accidentally uh, blew it up, let the magic smoke out and uh, <laughs> two years went by. Um, so I made the Rack and Pinion DRO and, um, and that inspired me to make this one here which you can see, uh, and I'm just going to kind of move it back and forth a little bit and I'll try to explain what these signals are. This is a little different than the other one because this one actually has three Hall sensors. They're not Hall sensors, they're TMR sensors, but they're sensing the magnetic field. So I've got channel A, channel B, and channel C, and what I'm doing with these three channels is I'm converting them actually to a sine and a cosine which uh, you can do through a bit of math. Here's uh, very quickly, this is the transformation uh, to go from, uh, this is creating a virtual sine and this is a virtual cosine. And if you use the arc tangent function and you, can, you know your pole pitch, you can derive your position. So that's what I've done. Um, what you can see here is kind of a, a, a magnified version of the arc tangent uh, output and and uh, the straighter this line is the more accurate you would say that that, that that the output would be you can see it's not perfectly straight so there is some errors now you can see when the line when the slope of the line get, flips the other way that's a change of direction so you can look at the the slope you can essentially look at when the value changes from zero to, to the max which is like 2 pi so when the, when the difference between the angles is larger than six, then you know you're, you're, um, you've, gone between, you've gone from one pole of the magnet to another pole of the magnet. And when the, the, the difference of the angles from the previous measurement is less than negative six or less than two pi, uh, you can, then you can see that you're going the other direction and uh, you've also kind of passed one of those pole boundaries. So you can, you can tell which direction you're going from this signal, which is kind of nice. Um, here I actually have the position uh, mapped out. So as I move it back and forth, you can see the position changing around. And uh, what we'll do is we'll put it up on the, um, the style indicator and I'll show you how accurate it is. We'll get on zero here. We'll unpause this. So I will zero everything out. So there's our zero. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so we'll go to one millimeter. And we're 0.98. And we were 0.90. Three millimeters. Kind of can't see that, can you? 3.06, 3.05, 4 millimeters, 4.01, 5 millimeters, 5.04, 6 millimeters. So it's pretty decently accurate. Now, if I go to 10, This is 10. Oh, that's 12. I gotta actually look at it now. Oh, but yeah, this is 10. This is 10. So we're reading 9.90, it looks like. And if we very quickly go back to zero, as quick as I can, 
or 0 0.1. So you can move it quickly. Um, you should be able to actually move it really quickly. Uh, it repeats. We're back on 0, 0 here. Uh, there's a little bit of error. Um, but if I go, if I move in tenths of a millimeter, like it's hard to do by hand. So there's one tenth. There's another tenth. There's another tenth. Oh, we seem to be getting more error right here. And there's 0.5, so we're off 0.3. So it's um, it's surprisingly accurate for for three sensors that are just kind of like, you know, they're SMD mounted to a PCB, but they're not like extraordinary levels of precision uh, mounted on there. What are the benefits of this over the rack and pinion? Well, there's no contact. Uh, I'll see if I can show you the gap. The gap is a couple millimeters in there. And uh, so it's completely contactless, which is a, which is a big benefit since the lathe is going to get, the chips get all over the lathe kind of no matter what you do. So uh, what I think I'm going to do is uh, kind of pot this in epoxy so I don't have any short circuits and then try to get it mounted on the lathe. I could do a whole other video on the math, to all the math behind how this actually works. And um, if you're interested, drop me a comment and let me know what kind of questions that you have because this was, it wasn't exactly easy to figure out. Let me just put it that way. Finally, I just want to thank uh, Keisha Can, or I'm probably completely pronouncing the name wrong. But uh, this person here uh, is what inspired me to do this again. So, so I somehow stumbled across their repository on GitHub and found this cool little caliper that, that, uh, that the person made. And um, you can see that they are using uh, magnetic, um, magnetic tape, like magnetic uh, refrigerator magnet kind of material. And uh, they're also using individual hall sensors. I haven't actually seen anybody do this before. Uh, I've read about it in like application notes in different papers, but uh, you know this was really inspirational to see. You know, while this while he has a little bit of error here, um, you know it does work, and it's the same method that I had been considering. Now, in my first version, I made some mistakes, which I've corrected in this subsequent version, um, and I wish I could read some Japanese because there's some, some important details in here. Um, there's also, uh, you know, what I would say is a, an unnecessary step, and I did this too. So when I originally did, used Anaquad, Anaquad was doing this, essentially this, this, uh, you know, d d dividing the waveform up into quadrants. And, and I, you know, now that I've read a lot more about it, I don't actually think this is necessary. I think that you get enough information from the arc tangent function. And as a matter of fact, the implementation of the arc tangent, the, the uh, ATAN2 or the inverse tangent function um, does this for you. So it's actually embedded inside ATAN2 uh, is dividing everything into this four quadrant um, setup here. So I think this is unnecessary. Um, one thing that he's doing that I'm not doing is uh, he's actually doing some amplitude compensation which I think will would improve the accuracy. And uh, there's some other compensation that he's doing that I'm not doing. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think I'm getting as good, if not better, result uh, than, than is demonstrated here. So I'm pretty happy with it. If you have any questions, uh, uh, let me know. And thanks for watching. Bye.